Good morning everybody, it's Lisa here from Rocco Baby Crochet and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make these lovely baby summer sandals. Um, so depending on what size you're going to want to make these in is what hook you're going to use. So I've made these for a six month old, three to six months, so I have used a 2.5 millimeter hook. Now, if you wanted to make these for up to three months old, you'd go down to a two millimeter hook. And if you wanted to make them up to a nine month old, then you'd go up to a three millimeter hook. Um, so the pattern remains the same for the different foot sizes. The things that you're gonna need to make your sandal is, I've got some of this cot double knit cotton. I've used Rico Essentials in white. And then I've got some yellow cotton, and that is, I don't know whether it's Berger or Bergeret, if I want to be a bit bougie, but that's the four-ply cotton in yellow. Um, I've got a pair of scissors, a darning needle, a little bit of white cotton and thread to sew on our buttons, some of these hemline buttons, which I've got the little pearl ones and the eight millimetres, if you wanted to use the same ones as me my two and a half millimeter crochet hook and you're going to need a couple of stitch markers okie dokie so let's get into making the sandals don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you enjoy this tutorial um, I'm still trying to make it up to a thousand subscribers so I'd really appreciate your help in that and if you do make these sandals then join us over on our Facebook group, Rocco Baby Crochet, and show us some pictures. I love seeing those as well. So let me just get my cotton. Okay, I've got my cotton, but what I wanted to show you first of all is the sole to these sandals is quite thick. And the way that we do that is that we slip stitch um, two soles together. So in total, you're gonna make four of the soles for the shoes. So let me show you how we make those. So if you grab your white cotton or whatever colour you've chosen to make the sole of your sandal with, and you're going to start off by chaining 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. And then in the second chain from the hook, and I'm gonna work into the back bumps, I think you all know I prefer working into those now, we're going to make a double crochet into the second chain from the hook. So that's UK terminology. So in US terminology, these are single crochets. And in total, we're going to make 14 double crochets all the way down. So one into each stitch along. One, two, three. So if you want to hit pause and come back to me when you've got your 14 double crochets, it should leave you with this stitch at the end with nothing worked into. So hit pause when you get to that, sorry, hit play when you get to that point. Okay, so I've done my 14 double crochets and into this last stitch here, we're going to place three double crochets all into this last stitch. So one, I pivot my work around as I'm doing it. two, oops, and three, and then working back down into these stitches, you're going to place one double crochet into the first 13 stitches. So going into this one here, and what I like to do is just carry my loose end round as well and underneath my stitches and it saves me having to sew them in later so that's one move along to the next one 
two and you're going to do that a total of 13 times so hit pause until you've got your 13 double crochets and it should leave you one stitch left that you've not worked into so hit play when you get to that point okay so I've placed my 13 double crochets and I've got my last stitch here and into this last stitch you are going to place two double crochets and then you're going to slip stitch it to here which is your first stitch of the round slip stitch and chain one where your chain one has come out of we're going to place a double crochet increase into this hole here into this stitch so you want to place two double crochets into that stitch one and two and then into the next 13 stitches along you're going to place one double crochet so just move back down placing one double crochet into each of the next 13 stitches two three so if you want to hit pause and press play when you get your third when you get to your 13 double crochets okay so I've completed my 13 double crochets and into the next three stitches in each one along we're going to place a double crochet increase so we're going to place two double crochets into each of the next three stitches so that's one and three so next what we're going to do is place one double crochet into each of the next 13 stitches two three just going along so once you've got your 13 double crochets if you want to press pause now and play again once you've got your 13 double crochets okay so you've got you should have two stitches left in round two and to into each of these two stitches you're going to place an increase so you're going to place two double crochets into the next two stitches and then we're going to join it to our first stitch which is here so this is our chain one and this is our first stitch here so we're going to slip stitch to our very first stitch in round two just to close it and then you're going to chain one so for round three into this stitch where your chain one is coming out of we're going to place a double crochet increase so you're going to place two double crochets into there one and two and then into the next eight stitches along you're going to place one double crochet so one two three four five six seven and eight and then into the next three stitches you're going to place half treble crochets so again that's uk terminology of half treble crochets in the us it's half double crochets 
So one half treble crochet into the next three stitches. And then into the next three stitches along, you're going to place one treble crochet. One, two, three. Don't forget, this is UK terminology, so in the US they are doubles. And then into the next six stitches along, we're going to place treble crochet increases. So we're going to place two trebles into each of the next six stitches along. So that's one into my next one. Two. three, four, let me just take that back, my cotton's just split, that's four, And six. Let me just check that because I went a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's our six increases. So then into the next three stitches, you're just going to be placing one treble crochet into them. So one, two, and three and then into the next three stitches you're just going to be placing one half treble crochet so there's one two and three and then into the next eight stitches you're going to place one double crochet so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we've got three stitches left, one, two, three, and into those we're going to place a double crochet increase. So two double crochets into each of the next three stitches along. One, two, and three and that completes round three so you just want to slip stitch it to the top of this first stitch which is here there's our chain one that's our actual first stitch so slip stitch it to there and you're going to chain one so into the stitch where your chain one is coming from you're going to place one double crochet just bear with me, my cotton's just split so one double crochet into there 
one double crochet into the next one along and then into this next stitch here you're going to place a double crochet increase one two so you're placing two double crochets into that stitch so into the next seven stitches along you're just going to place one double crochet so that's one two three four five six and seven and then into the next three stitches you're going to place one half treble into each of those one two and three and then into the next six stitches you're going to place one treble crochet so one two three four five and six into your next six stitches you're going to place treble crochet increases so two treble crochets into each of the next six, six stitches so there's one two, three, four, five, and this is our last one. And six. Just I just always like to check my increases that I've got the right amount. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Yeah. And then into the next six stitches, you're going to place one treble crochet into each of them one two three four five and six into the next three stitches you are going to be placing one half treble crochet so one half treble into the next three stitches one oops I missed a stitch then one two and three why do I keep doing that I keep missing this I think it's because I'm looking into the camera rather than looking at my work I need to stop doing that so my third half treble is going there 
and then into the next nine stitches you're just going to place one double crochet so one two three four five six seven eight and nine and then you should have five stitches left and into these five stitches we're going to work two double crochets into each one so one two three four and five and then you're going to slip stitch to your first stitch so this is your chain one this is your first stitch here and then chain one and for the fifth and final round you're just going to place one double crochet in every stitch around it doesn't matter whether you're going into a treble a half treble and um, you're just going to place one double crochet all the way around keep your double crochets keep your tension nice and loose so it's not going to turn up the sole of your shoe um, and i'll meet you back round it'll be a total of 60 double crochets you're placing all the way around don't fasten off i'm going to be showing you how i fasten off with it so it's invisible so there's no knots on the shoe okay so hit pause and come back to me when you've done your 60 double crochets okay so this is what the sole should be looking like once you've done all your double crochets all the way around and what you want to do to make that seamless join cut off sort of three or four inches and instead of slip stitching at this point to join round five to our first stitch just pull up on your thread and then what you want to do is just turn your work sorry place your hook let me pull it closer here place your hook through the front of the first stitch of round five bring your yarn your loose end over gone in so you're going in from the back I'm sorry you're going through the back of the stitch and pull that yarn through underneath both the loops that forms that first stitch of round five and pull that through and then turn you the sole over and you're just going to slide your hook underneath the back loop of the last stitch and pull that thread through and you can see there that we've created sort of a fake stitch so there's no knots or bumps on the soles of your shoe so they're all nice and flat and then all I do is to secure it, I go into one of the back bumps, which can be a little bit tricky to get your hook into, so just have a little bit of patience with it. And I pull that through, that loose end through, pull up a loop and do a chain, pull that through and just pull on that I put my thumb on the knot and then I pull and that just tightens it up and I do that twice so I'll do it a little bit further down as well just put my hook underneath one of the back loops pull through that loose thread 
that loose end make a chain and pull it through place my thumb where the knot is and just pull on that loose end this one here we're okay just to cut off because we, we um, crocheted over that one before so you want to go ahead and make yourself four of these So once you've got four in total, then come back to me. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I joined together the two soles to make that thicker sole for the sandal. So this is the right side of your work, so there's no knots or loose ends. Then when you turn them over, you can see where we've slip stitched and joined the two. You want to put both of the wrong sides together, so all you're seeing is the right sides of your work. So I usually start here at the back, so I just line my sole up so it's even. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pop your hook through the top loops of the stitches on both soles. So you're going to have four strands of yarn on your hook in total, so you're going through both of the V-stitches. Then you're going to grab the colour that you've chosen to do your sandal in and you're just going to like lay it over your hook and pull it up, pull it up through both of those stitches. Oh, my yarn's catching. There we go. This loose end underneath here, you just want to keep that held with your finger. And what we're going to do is we're going to work into the next stitch along and we're just going to place a, sl a slip stitch. So again, I'm going through all four loops, pulling up a loop and I'm going to place a slip stitch there and in every stitch along, making sure that I go through all four strands of yarn. You want to keep these slip stitches nice and loose because we're going to be working into them on the next round. So I tend to pull it up quite high before I make the slip stitch to keep them nice and loose. So work your way all the way around the shoe, making sure that you don't pull too tightly because it'll make it harder when you come to do the next round if you do. Okay, so if you want to hit pause and come back to me when you've done all your slip stitching. Okay, so this is what your sole will look like once you have slip stitched all the way around and joined them. So what you need to do is just, I just go underneath into that one there and I just make one little final one there and we'll tie in this loose end as we go around the next row so pull that through and we'll weave it sorry we'll weave it under our work that loose end as we go around so what you want to do next is you want to place your hook and you're just going to go underneath the back loop and this is why it's important that we've kept those stitches nice and loose attach your yellow or whatever color you've decided to do your sandal just by popping it over your hook and pulling it through and you're just going to take your working yarn moving those loose ends out of the way and we're going to work over those just to make them nice and secure. So you're going to chain one and into every back loop, so the loop that's away from you, so that one there, you're going to place one double crochet into each back loop across. I'm going to carry my loose ends with me just so um, 
it saves me a job of sewing in later on so it can be a little bit tricky to get these first few in I find it easier if I press down and then push it forward and then make my double crochet so press it down and forward just picking up the back loop of your stitch your slip stitch which is why I think I've said if you if you've done them too tight it can be quite difficult so you're just going to place one double crochet into every slip stitch into the back loop of every slip stitch so let me just make it a bit clearer for you so as the work is towards you here each slip stitch has got these V's the first line that forms the V which is closest to you is the front loop and the one that's furthest away from you is the back loop so you're just placing your hook underneath that one and forming your double crochet as you normally would and you're going to do that in every every slip stitch that you've got all the way around so once you've finished your double crochets um, then press play again okay so hit pause until you get to that point okay so once you've finished doing all your double crochets all the way around the sole this is what it should start be looking like now so what I want to do is I'm just going to slip stitch to this very first double crochet that we did and I'm going to just chain one and cut a length a couple of about three or four inches and I'll um, weave that in later we don't need to do the same fastening off that we did before for the sole because this is going to be worked over so you won't see that knot there so to make the front of our shoe which is this bit and I've used the bead, bead stitch what you want to do is the centre of your, the sole here just run your hook straight down there and find which stitch it comes out at I need to not look in the camera and look at my work okay so for me it's there so that's my middle stitch so what you want to do is from this middle stitch and including it count seven up so it's one two three four five six seven so there's my seventh stitch so pop your hook out and place it into your second seventh stitch along grab your yellow cotton and you want to attach your yarn here at this seventh stitch point so you're just going to whoops more fingers and thumbs today pull it through and you just want to chain one then what you're going to do is you're going to skip two stitches one two and into this third stitch along here you're going to place a treble crochet and then we're going to form our first bead stitch from here so the way that we do that is you're going to yarn over and wrap pop your hook in around you tread the post of your treble crochet and pull up a loop and you're going to do that three times and in total you should end up with seven yarns on your hook so let's just check one one two three four five six and seven and then you're going to yarn over and pull off all seven loops on your hook and chain one to close it you're going to skip a stitch and place another treble crochet and then you're going to make another bead stitch so you're going to yarn over wrap it around the post and pull up a loop yarn over 
wrap it around the post, pull up a loop, yarn over, wrap it around the post for the third time and pull up that loop. Yarn over and pull through all seven loops and chain one. Okay, so then you're going to skip one and into the next one along place another treble crochet and we're going to be placing for this row four bead stitches so you're going to yarn over wrap it around the post of your treble crochet pull up a loop and you're going to do that three times one two three seven loops on your hook yarn over pull them all off and chain one and then you're going to work your last bead stitch of this row so you're going to skip one stitch and then into the next one make your treble and then you're going to yarn over insert your hook around the post of your treble and pull up a loop and you're going to do that three times so that's two and three seven loops on your hook yarn over pull through all seven loops and chain one so where we've done this last bean stitch what you want to do is you want to skip two stitches and then into that third stitch along you're just going to make a slip stitch and then you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch along as well then you're going to turn your work and we're going to work the next row of B stitches so in this next row we need a total of one two three four five bead stitches so you're going to work a treble directly here into this chain space from the row below and that's where we're going to work our first bead stitch so you're going to yarn over, wrap your hook around the post of that treble, pull up a loop a total of three times. So you've got seven loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all seven. And chain one. Then you're going to move directly into this chain space here and make another treble. And then turn that treble into a bead stitch by yarning over around that post three times. Pull through all seven loops on your hook, chain one, move along to your next space, place your treble, just get a little bit more yarn. And then you're going to work your bead stitch around that post by yarning over and pulling up a loop a total of three times just like we have done in all the others yarn over pull through them all and chain one move into your next space make your treble and then yarn over and pull up a loop three times around the post of that treble to create your bean stitch. Bead stitch. It's a bead stitch, not a bean stitch. Have I been calling it a bean stitch? It's a bead stitch. Goodness me. One, two, three, four, five, three and chain one to close it off and then what you're going to do is count up two stitches and into the third one there you're going to slip stitch i'm just going to carry my loose end along as well and weave that in so into the third stitch along you're going to slip stitch into there and then slip stitch into your next stitch as well and then you're going to turn so if we have a look at this one so we're going to work it exactly the same we need six bead stitches for row three 
So we're going to work one here, 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 here. So in every chain space across, we're going to be working at a, another bead stitch. One second. Okay, so into this first chain space here is where you're going to make your first treble. And then you're just going to make your bead stitch around that post, yarning over and pulling up a loop three times. And then yarn over, pull through all seven loops and chain one. Move across to your next chain space. And place your treble. Then make your bead stitch around that treble. Pull through all seven loops, chain one. Make a treble into your next chain space. Yarn over and pull up a loop three times to form the bead stitch. Yarn over, pull through all the loops, chain one. Move across to your next chain space, place your treble, yarn over and pull up a loop three times around the post of your treble, forming your bead stitch, pull through all seven loops, chain one, move across to your next chain space, place your treble, yarn over and pull up a loop three times to form your bead stitch, yarn over, pull through all seven loops and chain one. And then here's our last chain space. So we need to place another treble into there. And then turn that into the bead stitch by yarning over and pulling up a loop three times around the post of that treble. And chain one. So again, you're going to slip, skip two stitches and slip stitch into that third, and then slip stitch into your next stitch along as well. So on row four, we only want five bead stitches. So one, two, three, four, five. So what we need to do on this one is turn your work. And we're not placing one directly here into this first one. We're going to work in between our first and our second bead stitch. So place a treble crochet there. Just get my tension right. And then you're going to work your bead stitch around that post as usual. One. Yarning over, pulling up a loop three times, yarn over, pull through seven and chain one. And then you're going to do it into your next chain space. Yarn over and pull up a loop three times to make your bead. Pull through all seven and chain one. Move across to your next chain space. So this is our third bead stitch. Pull up a loop three times around the post. Yarn over, pull through all seven loops, chain one. Work into your next chain space, one treble crochet. And then yarn over and pull up a loop three times to turn it into the bead. Yarn over, pull through all seven, chain one, and then this is our last bead stitch. So you're going to place your last treble crochet in your next chain space. Yarn over and pull up a loop around the post of the treble three times. Yarn over, pull through all seven loops and chain one. And then you're going to skip two and slip stitch into the third stitch along. 
and then slip stitch into the next stitch as well. And then for our last round of bead stitches, we need six again. So we're going to place one here, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So one in every chain space for this one. So place your first treble, and then just pull your stitches apart a little bit so you can see where your post is because it's a little bit close together this one and then just how you have done in all the others yarn over and pull up a loop three times around your treble post yarn over pull off all seven loops chain one and we're just going to do that in every chain space we've got and that will give us a total of six bead stitches for this last row one two three yarn over pull off all seven and chain one Treble crochet into my next chain space, yarn over and pull up a loop three times around the post, yarn over pull through all seven loops on my hook, chain one. Treble crochet into my next chain space, yarn over and pull up a loop three times around the post of the treble, yarn over, pull through all seven loops and chain one. Treble crochet into my next chain space, yarn over and pull up a loop three times and chain one. And then I'm at my last chain space, so I'm going to yarn over Place a treble in there, yarn over, pull up a loop three times around the post of that treble, yarn over, pull through all seven loops, chain one, skip two, skip two stitches down here, so that's one, two, and slip stitch into the third and slip stitch into your next stitch chain one and that's the top of your sandal finished so you can just cut three or four inches leaving enough just to sew those ends in pull that loose end through and pull on your loose end just to secure it and that's the top of your sandal all done Okay, so we're ready to work the last little part of the sandal, which is doing the back of it here. So the back here is three rows. So because I wanted the button here on this side, on this shoe, I started over here on the outer edge and I worked one, two, three, and then I did my chains. So it attached the button. So on this shoe, I need to do it on this side and work one, two, three, then I can do my chains. So make sure you're starting off on the correct side. You don't, you start on the opposite side to where you worked your first shoe or else you'll end up with buttons both on the inside. So what you want to do is from where you've joined your work, count up six stitches and into the seventh stitch, just place a stitch marker, that's where you're gonna begin. And the same on this one, count up six stitches four, five, six, and in the seventh one, place um, a stitch marker. That's where we're gonna begin, that's where we're going to finish. So you want to grab your yarn, and don't forget we're gonna tie in this loose end here as well as we go around. And where your stitch marker is, just, you can take that out now, and place your hook in that stitch. 
and attach your yarn. Just pull it through, chain one, and then just turn it. And including where you put your chain one, chain one and turn, and including where you put your chain one, you want to place one double crochet in every stitch along. So I'm just working over this loose end as well, just to save me a job at the end. And when I get to the one at the middle, I'm going to work over that one as well. So if you want to hit pause, and when you get to your last double crochet, where your second stitch marker is, hit play and I'll show you how we do the last two rows. Okie dokie, so hit pause and come back to me when you're at your stitch marker. Okay, so I'm at my last stitch and you should have placed a total of 20, excuse me, I've got hiccups, 20 double crochets all the way around the back. So I can trim that loose end out of the way. So I've weaved all those in. Do that a little bit neater when I've finished. I just wanted to get it out of the way a little bit. So what I do next is I turn my work and I place a false treble into this. So I'm going to insert my hook into the top of that very first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop and place a double crochet. And then I'm just going to pick up that stitch which is to the left, that loop that's to the left and make another double crochet on top. So it gives me the height of a treble crochet. Into the second one along, I'm just going to place another, oops, I'm sorry. Let me take that back. You're placing one, I've got myself on me. Sorry, you're placing one, that one treble and then chain one. Skip one and place a treble into your very next stitch. Around the post of this next treble here, we're going to yarn over, pull up a loop three times and make the bead stitch. Yarn over, pull through all seven loops and chain one. Skip one and then place your next treble. Yarn over a loop, pull up a loop three times to make your bead stitch. Yarn over, pull through all seven, chain one. Skip a stitch and into the next stitch you're placing another treble. And then you're going to yarn over and pull up a loop three times, forming another bead stitch. And you're going to do that all the way around and when you get to your last couple of stitches come back to me so if you want to hit pause and make your way around making the bead stitch in exactly the same way okay so i've placed my last bead stitch and i've got and i've chained one to close it off and i've got three stitches left so i skip one stitch into the next stitch i'm going to place a treble and into the next stitch, I'm going to place another treble. So you just want these two here because this is the side that your button's going to be attached to. So it gives you a little bit more to attach your button onto. Turn it around and then you're going to make into the top of this one another fake treble by stacking two doubles on top of each other. And then a treble into the top of your next stitch, chain one, and then you're going to move over to this chain space here and work your bead stitch there. Chain 
chain one and move across into your next bead stitch so in total you're going to have one two three four five six seven bead stitches in this round so if you come back to me when you've worked your seven bead stitches and i'll show you how we finish it off okay so i've got my seven bead stitches and what I want to do now is just to finish off is I want to place one treble crochet into the top of this very first stitch that we did. And I'm just going to leave, pull up a loop, leave my yarn attached for a second. And this is what you should be looking like now. And I'm just going to attach my button. So I'm going to attach my button on the top here where I've got my two treble crochets. So you place your button here on the outer edge and then I'll show you how we make our little tie for it. Okay, so I've attached my button onto the side and I've popped my hook back through where I did my last um, treble crochet and you just want to chain nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight and nine and then what you want to do is go down in between where you've got your bead stitch so one two three in between the third and the fourth bead stitch place your hook and just make a double crochet so again that's UK terminology so for US that's a single and then you want to um, chain 12, sorry 13, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and 13. And then you're going to join back to your ninth chain. So that's 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. And you're just going to insert your hook and slip stitch it. And then what you want to do is you need to leave yourself quite a long... piece of thread because we're going to just make that little button loop look a lot nicer than it is at the minute and pull up on that so you need about six inches or so pull on that little knot there just to secure it and that is our button loop but what we're going to do is we're just going to wrap our cotton around it just to make it look a little bit nicer so if you just thread your needle and you're just literally going to go into the center of the button loop and pull your thread and do it all the way around and it'll look a little bit like a donut just be patient here and, and do it quite neatly take your time with it focus here so that is all I'm doing all the way around just shuffling them up so they sit next to one another it just makes your button loop look 
nice and neat. You just have to play around with the cotton a little bit, making sure you keep it moved up. Nearly finished. Just got this little bit here where we did the chain just to make that look neat. I think we've just got about two more to do and then we've gone all the way around. Just going to put one more there. Then when I do that last one, I'll just put my hook, my needle, sorry, underneath and just make a little knot in it. Pulling it down firmly so you can't see it. And then I'll just weave my tail end just under a couple of stitches. These can be quite tight to get under and get your needle through. You have to really force that through because we wrapped it quite tight just so it looks prettier. You can see it looks nicer than just leaving it as the chains. Trim your end. And then we are done pretty much. Let me just come out a little bit here. And so then that will just pop over your button like that. So you just need to shape them a little bit. But there you go. Two beautiful summer sandals. Pretty easy. You have to have a little bit of patience because it's a, a tiny bit of a fiddly project but they look gorgeous once they're done. So I hope you have fun do making these sandals. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the video. And if you do make some, join us over on Rocco Baby Crochet on Facebook. We're on Instagram as well. I'd love to see anything that you make from my videos. Okay, take care and have a lovely Easter. Bye.